বাংলাদেশ দারুণ পারফর্ম করেছে তা নিয়ে কারোরই সন্দেহ নেই তবে আমরা এমন একজনের সাথে কথা বলবো ওয়েস্ট ইন্ডিজ ক্রিকেটের স্বর্ণযুগের সাক্ষী তিনি ছিলেন বাংলাদেশে বিবর্ণ এই যে অবস্থা ক্যারিবিয়ানদের সেটাও তিনি নিজ চোখে দেখেছেন তার ভালো লাগা খারাপ লাগা বাংলাদেশে দীর্ঘদিনে এই দলটাকে দেখার অভিজ্ঞতা এবং কিছু প্লেয়ারদের সাকিব তামিম মাশরাফিকে কেমন দেখেছেন সেই বিষয়টি নিয়ে কথা বলবো আমাদের সঙ্গে আছেন ওয়েস্ট ইন্ডিয়ান লেজেন্ড এবং ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কমেন্টেটর ইয়ান বিশপ ইয়ান ওয়েলকামিং ইউ টু টি স্পোর্টস থ্যাংকস ফর হ্যাপিং মি so you have seen the golden time of the west indies but currently they're struggling to find their feet so what is the situation currently do you think need to be improved to get there again infrastructure is, is certainly a big key um, the standard of coaching is something that has had some emphasis in the caribbean at the grassroots level facilities um, because it's it's a part of the region that is economically challenged so getting the infrastructure set up is critical to development but in t20 cricket they have won two world t20 titles and performing relatively well compared to the one day and test cricket do you think that it's a area of concern well t20 cricket sits quite nicely with the west indian athleticism the power that many of our batsmen can generate So 50 over cricket and test cricket demand different skills greater concentration uh maybe stronger technique from a batting perspective so while we do well in T20 cricket and that's an achievement in itself it's it's great to have that we really need to develop that infrastructure to teach our young players how to play the longer formats better in some regions like from antigua from barbados there were a lot of cricketers were coming from from that region but what is the problem some regions doesn't providing that much of cricketers once upon a time they used to be i think it would go in cycles so in some decades you will find players coming out of say jamaica more than they would out of uh, the leeward islands and vice versa and a lot of it will depend now on how the structure sets up let's say in trinidad where in times past economically we were a very strong country so you'd find quite a few of the t20 players coming from trinidad and tobago whereas jamaica may have provided more long format players so i think it really just depends on how well we can go again setting up those structures across the islands they're all independent countries so you can understand the challenges of travel of different currencies and all of that so it's a work in progress but I can assure everyone there's still in spite of what we've seen here there's still bowling talent in the Caribbean the batting is a problem if all the players were able to come here and should have participated in past years do you think West Indies performance would have been on top well we would have liked i certainly would have liked to have seen the first choice players you're talking about guys like Kyron Pollard Jason Holder Roston Chee Sheldon Cottrell Evan Lewis Slendell a whole host of guys she hope but in most teams around the world today and i i mentioned it on commentary earlier apart from india maybe england if you lose your top 9 or 10 players and you have to travel overseas to play I think Bangladesh would have struggled if they had no Tamim Mushfiqur, uh, Litan Das and all those 9 or 10 top players. So it's unfortunate but it's life in the pandemic. You can't blame players for opting not to travel. They have families. So we just have to grit our teeth, get through it and hopefully when we're at home, which is the next series against Sri Lanka, everyone will be available. If top players were available Do you think that West Indies ODI rankings and their ODI performance should have been better? Well, we haven't played ODI cricket well for a long time now. To be fair, our ODI team has been quite weak. Um the T20 team has been strong, the Test team has come and showed sparks. So I think there are a number of challenges, a number of players being unavailable due to different options and opportunities as well again as batting has been the main source batting for long periods is where the administration and the coaching setup has to try to develop how far this team can go will they be able to this qualify team here? not this team <laughs> <laughs> this team yeah uh made up of really what are replacements won't go very far what 
West Indies is hoping to happen, what I'm hoping to happen is to see some of our first choice players. You're talking guys like Nicholas Puran and all of these guys. Shimron Hitmeyer. Shimron Hitmeyer coming back into the fold and really committing to the long term for the development. If you can get an Andre Russell, a Sunil Narayan, all of those players will make this. Had it been the first choice team, I'm not guaranteeing a victory for West Indies, but you'd have seen a lovely quality of cricket. If things are going like this, their World Cup qualification will be at risk, you know that. Well, it is at risk. They know that. They had to qualify for the last World Cup in the qualification tournament in Zimbabwe. I think it's good that we've had the ODI Super League. Bangladesh, it's, look, it's great that Bangladesh have gotten someone to tour here to get back into international cricket because players have been unemployed for nearly a year now. So I think it's, it's very noble of the West Indies to have managed to send the team to get international cricket going in Bangladesh. Fingers crossed the tour will get through the bubble without incident because that is absolutely critical so people understand Bangladesh is safe to tour. You've been somewhere after the resumption of cricket, after the COVID pandemic. You have seen some atmospheres in England, in New Zealand and here in Bangladesh. Do you think that cricket is in right now in a position to continue? It has to. Otherwise, look, for example, if the West Indies board, and I'm not a board person, but I think it's common sense, if the West Indies did not get the invitation to go to England, they could have just gone into receivership because there's no revenue stream. Bangladesh cricket needed to get something going. The broadcasters needed to get some activity as well. So look, even in the NBA, National Basketball Association of America, they are challenged as well. They are playing through a pandemic. So they've had to, to get bubbles. They've had to get protocols in place. They're still getting infections. Cricket has been fortunate in that we haven't had too many. So it has to happen. This is just the way of life, at least for the foreseeable future. Well, the life is changing as well as Bangladesh. They have changed. Look at from, us, we're social distancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from uh, 2000, Bangladesh, they're the 10th test member. Before that, Sri Lanka came in and get rivalry to India and Pakistan. With three of them having been there previously, after the inclusion of Bangladesh, how much it has changed in the subcontinent, the scenario? How far Bangladesh are from those three countries, do you think? Bangladesh have certainly gotten better at home in test cricket. They've gotten better in white ball cricket across the board. One of the things they've got to look at is getting their fast bowling going. If you have to win, if Asian countries are to win overseas, in the Western countries, they must have fast bowling. Look at what India have done, right? So I think with Otis Gibson here, that has been a primary focus. So that's good. The batting is getting better. It'll still take time, but Bangladesh have definitely become more competitive across the globe in white ball cricket and at home in test matches. Okay, another thing, like you have seen Shakib over the years yeah. and you have put him your ODI team of the decade yeah. before Ben Stokes. Yeah. And what significance have you seen in Shakib? I just, uh, you look at the World Cup, over 600 runs in the World Cup, batting at number three at a very good tempo, 11 wickets as well. So he's proven himself to be an excellent or wrong player. His consistency with the bat, I think, is the main thing. And he doesn't fail often with the ball. So it's no surprise. I think people talk about it as a surprise. Oh, Shakib's done well. Shakib's an excellent player across formats. So great for Bangladesh cricket. Why would you put him in ODI cricket's great all-rounders list? Great. Give him some time before we okay. start ranking him. I think he's, he's right up there in that top group right now. And he's still active. And he still have a lot of, has a lot of cricket in front of him. So just give him some time before we start trying to put him among the icons. You have seen Mashrafi bin Murtaza over the years. His captaincy has changed Bangladesh. You are seeing that in ODI cricket especially. So after Mashrafi, Tamim is leading the team, team. What significance have you seen in Mashrafi's captaincy? What aggression have you seen in him? Well, he's, he's been very aware of the game. He, I have found him to understand the nuances of field setting of bowling changes improved significantly over the years very confident in his own right leading from the front as well so he is left if he doesn't play again he's left a great legacy he's taken the team a step forward and that's what you want with each generation and each leader 
to leave the team in a better shape than when he met it. And Mushrafi has nothing to be ashamed of. He is given his all with bad knees and 20 operations. Brilliant. I want to know a secret, not secret, uh, a trick that Bangladesh spinners always challenge West Indian, West Indies batters, like right arm off spinners like Mehedi, earlier Shoha Ghazi. They trouble West Indies a lot. What is the problem do you think facing Bangladesh off spinners? I think the same problems that face good, any good off spinner. Um, generally in cricket, the ball that spins away from the bat is a problem. So against left-handers, once the pitches are turning, Mahedi and those who have gone before him have done well. But I also think that there are some batsmen who have tended to cope well with it. The West Indies have one or two guys we look to. I think Nicholas Peran, for example, would be an excellent player across formats. Shea Hope has to find his touch in Test Match cricket. So we've got one or two guys who I think will cope with the spinners in the future. An interesting question. What else, apart from cricket, do you like most in Bangladesh as well as subcontinent? <laughs> the friendliness of the people. Okay. Um, the cricket fans on social media that I interact with have been very kind, understanding, respectful. Because what I find on social media, people tend to be disrespectful because they are not positioned where you are. I have found that Bangladeshis very, very friendly people. Um, I look at your under-19 team that won the World Cup and I saw a generation of players who will not back down from big-named opposition. And that reminds me of India's charge forward with Dravid and Tendulkar Laxman. No backing down in the face of great names. So I think everything in terms of cricket in Bangladesh is on a good footing. Uh, like Alzari Joseph and Shimran Hitmaya, they were the part of the champion West Indies team who, who played in, in Dhaka in 2016. Do you think that that World Cup winning team, you are mentioning that Akbar Ali, Shahada Joy, Tanjit Hassan Tamim, they will be able to push themselves in senior team? It depends. I remember talking to Khalid Mahmood, who was yeah. in South Africa with us, and he has a lot to do with the development of these youngsters in Bangladesh cricket, right? I'm sure he's very aware of it. What is important for those young players, and it's something that I'm big on, it's not necessarily the coaching, because I think that's there, it's the mentorship. Mm -hmm. Getting those young players to understand the game by attaching someone they look up to and respect to keep them on track and to point them in different directions at different stages. If they have that, all the other stuff is taken care of. Any special foods or any menus you tried in this area? No, I'm a very picky eater, so I just stick to what I know. So. Um, the curries, I'm okay with that. But we enjoy you most. We love to hear you on the microphone whenever anything is happening in cricket grounds. So thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Kotha Silen Yan Bishop, Tar Ovigota, A subcontinent, Bangladesh Ke Dakha, Ebong Aki Shonge, Saki Balhasam Ketini, ODI team of the decade, Rekhetsen, Sheto Bangladesh Jonon, Boro Prapti, Yan Bishop, Katsteke, Ebong Amra. Chai, যে ইয়ান বিশপ বাংলাদেশের সাথে ওয়েস্ট ইন্ডিজের সিরিজ যখনই হবে বাংলাদেশে আসবেন এবং এমন ভালো ভালো কথা সব সময় আমরা তাদের কাছ থেকে শুনতে চাইবো